Hello and welcome back to Maths with Mr. Duffield. I am the aforementioned Mr. Duffield, and I've had a request from my Ellie to go through some factorising stuff that goes a little bit tricky. Let's start with something maybe a little bit more straightforward. Um, this is a algebraic expression here. 6p to the power of 4 plus 8pq plus 10p squared. Um, we know that there's an element in the numbers that's common between all of these terms, and there's an element in the algebra p to the 4, p cubed, and p squared. That's common in all these terms. And if we're asked to factorize this, this means there'll be a number that goes outside the bracket, and there'll be a, a bracket containing terms. Uh, fully factorizing means taking out the biggest possible value out of these three. Um, what I mean by that is, what is, what is the highest common factor of 6, 8, and 10? The answer to that is 2. What is the highest common factor between p to the power of 4, p cubed, and p squared? Well, that's p squared. p squared is common in all of those terms. And then we answer, uh, we ask ourselves the question, what do I times 2p squared by to make 6p to the 4? That is 3p squared. Okay, and for the next term, what do I times 2p squared by to make 8p cubed? You should see that that's uh, 4p. P. And then the end at the end here, what do I times 2p squared by to make 10p squared? Well, the answer to that is 5, 5. Okay? And we can check this by, by expanding this out. 2p squared times 3p squared. 2 times 3 is 6. p squared times p squared makes p to the power of 4, which matches that first term. So that's got to be right. 2p squared times 4p. 2 times 4 is 8p squared times p makes p cubed, which matches that second term, so we've got that right. And then 2p squared times 5, that makes 10p squared, which again matches the, the last term. So we know that this is the correct uh, factorization of that expression. Nice and easy. But obviously... If we had something that looks like this, then things become a little bit trickier. What if it was the case that we had um, fractions in here? Well, we'd have to factorize out, I would recommend, I would say, factorizing out the, the fraction element of this to make what's inside the bracket um, whole numbers. That would be my recommendation. So, what's common between a third and a two thirds? That would be a third. And then we've got x squared y here and x y squared here. We should see that common between both of these terms is the letter x and the letter y. What goes inside the bracket, i.e. what do I times a third x y by to make a third x squared y? Well, you should see that that's just the, the letter x. And then what do I times a third x y by to make two thirds x, y squared. Well, you should see that that is uh, 2, y. In other words, the 2 times by the third to make 2 thirds. The x is already accounted for, and then I need another y to times by the y to make y squared. Okay? So that's how we deal with, with when we have fractions in the expression. We're going to factorize out that fraction to make the uh, inside of the bracket easier to stomach. Okay? Carrying on, a couple more examples and then we'll finish. Uh, what, ha what happens if the fractions are different, if they, if they don't have the same denominator? With the, with the question above, we had um, thirds, and that was straightforward. But what if it was a fifth x and, and 1 over 10? I would recommend that you rewrite this as 2 over 10 instead of a fifth for x, and then plus 1 over 10. And then once that's there, well then, factorizing that is is more straightforward, isn't it? Let's take out one tenth of this uh, of this expression, and then inside the bracket it'll go, what do I times one tenth by to make two tenths of x? Well, that's gotta be two x. And then what do I times one tenth by to make one tenth? Well, that's just one. Okay, so we deal with uh, uncommon denominators by making uh, the denominators common. In this case, making them both into tenths. Now, 
Last little question on this, these kinds of questions. What happens, my goodness, if, if it's two thirds and one quarter? Well, it's the same principle as what we had before, but we need to change both fractions this time. We need to change both fractions. What's the common denominator of three and four? Uh, what's the lowest common denominator? That's gonna be a 12th, I hope that you can, you can see. So two thirds, you can write as um, eight over 12, a, b squared, and then timesing the top and bottom of this by three, we'll get uh, three over 12, a, b. Okay, so we've made these uh, fractions at the beginning of, of each of these terms into common denominator uh, equivalents, twelfths in this case. So when it comes to factorizing this, hopefully you should see, well, taking out one twelfth this is going to be how we're going to make this more straightforward. And then AB squared and AB, what's common between both of those? AB is going to be common between both of those. What do I times 1 12th of AB by to make 8 over 12 AB squared? You should see that that's 8 to make the 1 12th into 8 over 12. And then we already have an A here. And to make B into B squared, this term needs to contain the letter B. And then for 3 twelfths AB, what do I times 1 12th AB by to make 3 twelfths AB? You should see that that's just, that should just be 3, right? Because 3 is multiplied by 1 twelfth to make 3 twelfths, and then we already have the AB outside of the bracket. All right, so we've worked through from the fundamentals of, you know, more complex algebraic uh, factorization to dealing with when we have fractions in our terms. In other words, make the fractions have a common denominator and then use that common denominator to factorize out to make the interior of the bracket uh, more palatable. I hope that that helps you, and um, I wish you all the best, because it's only a few days now until the summer break. Uh, rest well, do a little bit of maths every day, keep yourself sharp, and come back to CH in the Michaelmas term of, of 2020, ready to, to excel. I look forward to that with bated breath. And I will see you guys very, very soon.